So once we have this, um, I think we can actually talk about some of the terminologies that we use in simple harmonic oscillator motion and some of the features that are involved there. So um, I think I'm going to skip this portion for now. Um, we'll look at energies at some later, more convenient time. But I want to use one of these uh, solutions to introduce some terms that we are going to use. Um, this is particularly important because these are the same terms that we are going to use when we start talking about waves uh, later this week. So um, uh, I guess I have to leave this. OK. So there's a reason this is my preferred form. The reason, um, by the way, when you look at this, how many undetermined quantities do you see? You see at least one, A is undetermined. So Stephen, what's the second undetermined quantity? Yeah, phi. I have no equation that tells me what phi has to be. It can be 0. If it's 0, then I get this back. It can be pi over 2. If it's pi over 2, I get the sine thing back. Good. So, uh, so it has two undetermined quantities, like the other uh, general solution. And as I keep saying, that is a feature. Uh, that is a, it's not an accident. Um, it's a, actually related to this. So uh, the reason I prefer this form of the solution is because each of these parameters, both of the undetermined parameters and the determined parameter, they actually uh, match up to a particular feature of the oscillatory motion. And I can give it a name. That's why I prefer this form. So let me actually have a fit, uh, plot of oscillation here so that I have something to point at and talk about. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, let me write down the names. You might have heard of this before. If not, uh, I mean, I guess there's no reason you would have unless you did it outside the class. A, um, there's a reason I like the letter A for this parameter. It's because it stands for amplitude. Um, I don't think we have used the word, defined the word amplitude in this class yet. I mean, you might have some sense of what an amplitude is, like amplitude of a tsunami or, like, have you, does that English sentence make sense? If people talk about amplitude of a tsunami, no? Has anyone here heard the word amplitude before today? <laughs> Some of you know, never mind. Uh, we'll define this word. Uh, whether you have a sense for it or not, doesn't matter. So A, it's a, what we call amplitude. And there's a graphical feature we can point to and say that's the amplitude. Um, omega, I talked about it. Let me write it down anyway. Angular frequency. And this phi, it's a, um, it's, uh, it's a start of an interesting concept. Let me just write it down and I'll explain it later. Um, phi or phi is what I would call, uh, what many people would call a uh, phase factor. Have people heard of word phase before? It's not entirely foreign word. You do see the, here and see the use of the word phase outside of mathematics. Any example of use of phase in every day that has nothing to do with mathematics? Or unless you can describe it in, without mathematics? I have a particular example in mind, but there might be other examples. Yeah, phases of the moon. That's the most common one. So like, uh, so I mean, everyone here has seen the moon, right? You have seen the moon phases, right? So if, uh, so this is the full moon, and at some later time, it would uh, turn into moon that looks like this. Uh, I was told not to call this a half moon. Uh, it's a quarter moon. <laughs> and eventually, it'll turn into uh, crescent moon. And um, it'll eventually turn into the new moon, which actually means no moon. Um, and then it goes back to crescent. Oh, I skipped a phase here. So it goes to crescent again, uh, goes to a quarter moon again, and then uh, eventually it reaches this shape also. Um, oops, I drew this wrong, sorry. Um, it reaches this shape also, where it's missing a crescent of dark area. Uh, 
Anybody know what the name of this phase of money is? It can be waxing or waning. That refers to if it's increasing or decreasing. It's called, uh, I learned this the first time I taught uh, astronomy two summers ago. It's called a gibbous. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that word before I taught astronomy. <laughs> but so this is what we would refer to as phases of moon. That's the one concrete example I know where the word phase is not technically, uh, it doesn't have to be mathematical. So what do you think we mean by phase when we say phases of moon? State, it's a state uh, in a particular case. The thing that's special about the moon is that the, the thing that people noticed uh, since uh, prehistoric times, people noticed that moon goes in cycles. Like what I'm drawing here, it's cyclical. The full moon comes around every 28 days or so, give or take a fraction of a day. So, so there's a moon cycle, and when we refer to a phase of moon, we are looking at a particular point in that phase. So you can, we use the word phase the exact same way when we look at an oscillatory motion. Oscillatory motion is a cyclical. You can see it here. It goes in cycles. Goes down and up, and it does the exact same thing again. Goes down and back up, down and back up, <laughs> down and back up. So um, here, one cycle would be, so this would be one cycle, right? I just picked the one in the middle, right? So when we have this one cycle, when we refer to phase here is, um, is, well, you know, which part of this cycle are you referring to? So when my phi here, when this phi is equal to zero, then I'm looking at the part of the cycle where the phase factor is zero radian. So that would be this point in the cycle. This point in time would be indicated by the phase. What if, if I want you to look at, um, well, what if, if I want you to look at a part of the um, cycle that's one full cycle away? If I want you to look at this point, what would you say phi is equal to at this point? There are multiple answers possible, but you know, what would you say phi is equal to at this point? What would you say the phase is there? You could say zero, as in repeating this again. But let's say I want you to distinguish this point from this. One, cycle. One, One full cycle away. So I look at, hmm, phi is an argument to cosine, right? So I want to express it in terms of angles, radians. So in radians, what would the phi be? Not quite pi. Two pi, right? Yeah. Two pi is one full cycle. So that's what we mean by phase. That, so here's one full cycle, and in the angular unit, one full cycle is two pi radians. So two pi radians. So that's what we mean by phase. And the role of this phi is that it tells you which part of this uh, cycle you are beginning. When time t is equal to zero, what is this phi? So, um, if you are, let me just give you an example. In this solution here, if your phi was equal to, hmm, if your phi was equal to pi, then you would get a solution that really behaves like, um, wait, pi, sorry, no, pi is wrong. If your phi was equal to uh, three pi over two, that would give you a solution that really behaves like a sine instead of cosine. Because instead of starting from here, if I'm get going three pi, oh, sorry, yeah, three pi over two away, that's a three quarters of a cycle. So, I have, so let me divide up this one cycle into quarters. One quarter, two quarters, half, and the third quarter. So instead of starting from here, if I start from here, then this is what the motion of a variation of position looks like. That kind of looks like a sign, right? Goes up, maximum, at zero again, at half, you know, 
a half a period later, and then goes and do this, does this. Yeah. So, so that's a phi, and we call this phase factor because it's some constant factor that determines this thing called a phase. And um, I will just point this out without belaboring the point. Um, I want you guys to eventually develop an eye for a difference between what we call phase angle and um, physical angle. Um, because um, phase and actual physical angle, they are two different, two entirely different quantities that are both measured in unit of angle. I don't think you have anything quite like that because it's mainly because angle is a unitless quantity. Um, any other physical quantity, when you um, different units measure different things. So let me just give you an example of this. I will actually work this out again. So this is something called a simple harmonic oscillator. Um, and, but this is only one example of simple harmonic oscillator. Another example you can use is this one, pendulum. So if I move this to a little bit to the side and let go, the way this moves, you can actually model this like you, we model that one. We can come up with an equation of motion that looks quite similar to this in different terms. And we can describe this motion as a simple harmonic oscillator motion. Now here, you can describe an actual physical angle. What would you say the maximum physical angle that this makes with the vertical is? Yeah, take a guess in degrees, which is easier. 45 degrees, okay, sounds good. So from here, about here is 45 degrees. Okay, so this is oscillates back and forth between plus 45 degrees and minus 45 degrees, or between plus pi over, pi over four and minus pi over four. Now, what if, if I were to ask you the phase angle of this oscillation? So, so starting from here, oscillates, comes back. What was the change in the phase angle? Yeah, two pi. It went over one full cycle. It didn't actually rotate over, oops. Um, it didn't actually rotate over two pi of angle but what we went through is two pi of cyclical motion. So that's the distinction here, and I will tell you that I have seen people with a PhD in physics who get this mixed up if they are not careful. <laughs> so let me just point it out, and I will, in the remaining time, describe the amplitude and angular frequency. Uh, easiest way to define amplitude is on this figure. This is amplitude. Um, so take the, this equilibrium position, the displacement or the change from this position to the maximum position of change. This is what we call amplitude. Okay. Yeah, I will leave it there. Uh, amplitude is one weird quantity where I'm not going to assign an actual unit to an amplitude uh, as a general matter. Here, uh, in this particular example, amplitude is measured in meters, right? Yes? Yes? But when you look at different types of oscillation, the amplitude can be measured in different units. Like with this pendulum motion, you, um, so you could measure amplitude in degrees, 45 degrees. So when you talk about amplitude um, as a, like a measuring amplitude in par some particular unit, it depends on uh, what kind of physical quant uh, what you are using as the, the measure of your oscillation. In fact, it, as you look at this oscillation, you don't have to use the position. You can actually use, uh, you can actually use the velocity. So if we, you were to use the velocity to describe your position, I mean, sorry, if you are to use the velocity to describe your oscillation, then in that case, your amplitude of that velocity oscillation will be meters per second. So, so I don't want to tie amplitude down to a particular unit, only that um, the way you describe amplitude is through what you see here. Um, let me try to line it up back again. So the way you describe amplitude 
is the change. Change of what? I don't want to specify. Change from the equilibrium or sort of non-oscillating state to the maximum point of oscillation. Yeah. Um, okay, let's uh, talk about angular frequency. Um, if you are given a picture of oscillation like this, how would you measure angular frequency? I mean, you know, you know where it occurs in the solution, but how would you relate this? How would you relate this parameter with some feature you can measure from a graph? Yes? Yeah. So how much time it takes to go one full cycle? Uh, you can talk about a period of that, right? We talked about period. So this takes some, this uh, amount of time is what we would call period. And we can relate this angular frequency to a period. So this is how I would do it. So when you look at cosine of omega t, when you look at cosine of omega t, um, how much do you want omega t to change as you go through one period? As in, omega t is equal to 0 when t is equal to 0. And what I'm asking is, what do you want it to be equal to uh, when my time t is equal to the period, capital T? Like, what should this omega t be equal to? 2 pi, right? It went through one full cycle. So you would say, all right, this should be 2 pi. So omega t should be equal to 2 pi when this t is equal to capital T. In other words, 2 pi is equal to omega times the period. So that's all you need to figure out what omega is. So angular frequency omega, that's equal to 2 pi over the period. That's one way of expressing it. Or if you take one over period and you recognize, oh, that's the frequency, then angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. Like different ways of expressing it. All right, uh, let me just end the, the, this class with one last demonstration that will kind of relate to the lab that you will do later today. So it has to do with what determines the angular frequency. Um, over all these parameters, this is special because um, because all these, uh, you know, amplitude, it's arbitrary. It can be anything. Uh, it's undetermined quantity. Phase factor, it's another undetermined quantity. But this angular frequency alone is determined by my equation of motion. In fact, when you stare at the equation of motion, you realize that this coefficient here this is equal to omega squared. So that gives me an idea. Let me try this. I'm going to try to change this ratio, k over m, and see if my angular frequency changes. My solution says that it should change. Right? So let's try it. What I'm going to do is let me save this data, store latest run, and I'm going to redo this experiment except this time with a different mass. So this was 200 gram mass I was using before. Let me use 300 gram mass. Combine these two. Uh, that one. No, uh, let me actually double it because it's not going to be a huge change. I mean, this. So let me use 400 gram mass. I'll make sure that it doesn't. OK, I have to use. 200 gram, sorry. <laughs> so I have to use 300 gram, otherwise it's going to be too close to the motion detector. So, all right. So 300 gram mass. So are you expecting angular frequency to increase or decrease? Decrease. So you are expecting the period to increase or decrease? Period to increase. It should be oscillating slower. Well, let's see if that's the case. Let me zero this again because I moved it. Zero it again. Well, let's give it a try. I'm going to pull it down and let go. Um, no, I should actually start by pushing it up. OK. OK, that's about the good height. So ready? Uh, OK. 
sorry, it moves around too much. Uh, let me redo it. All right, that's good enough. The bottom part is flattening up because it's getting too close. But uh, let me erase the board here so that the other lines I've drawn doesn't confuse. So you are comparing the thin line, which was our previous result, with the thick line. So OK, at the peak here, they line up kind of this way. And the thick line, so it was behind it before. Now it gets ahead uh, because the period here is longer. So yeah, it, it, uh, the, this mass on a spring behaves the way that we would expect from this uh, solution that we derived. And this is really the biggest result that we take out of this whole set of calculation that um, you know, a lot of this we kind of intuitively guessed. The only thing that we didn't have to guess was that the angular frequency depended on this way. <laughs> 